This video will show you the basic concepts for doing a sweep with guide curves. We've already done a sweep with a single profile and a single path, such as what we did when we made the bottle cage. Here we had a profile and a path when we made a sweep of them. We ended up with a sort of noodle that had a constant cross-section following a complicated path, the cross-section being defined by the profile at the beginning of the sweep. When sweeping with guide curves, we can have a profile which changes its size and shape along its path. Here we have a canoe-like shape, which normally we would make with loss, but here we've actually made it with a single sweep that's being controlled by guide curves. The cross-section of this sweep is highlighted here, and the shape of this is modified by guide curves running along these edges that change the size of this cross-section as it starts at the beginning and moves its way toward the end of the path. To see how this is done, we'll start with a profile, a path, and two guide curves. If we do a normal sweep, start with our profile and our path, we'll get the familiar type of a sweep where the profile stays constant all the way from one end of the path to the other. But we can add our guide curves by opening this box here, clicking on this curve here, which you see immediately is modifying the shape of the sweep. And this last guide curve here which is modifying the bottom and pulling this into the shape of the guide curves. If I take a cross section anywhere along this length, if I look at the cross section of this sweep along its path, I can see that the cross section looks pretty much the same as I move forward and backward. But what is happening is it's just getting smaller and smaller as the three curves, the path and the two guide curves, are driving this cross section to be smaller and smaller until it gets to a point at the end. But the basic shape is retained. Two straight lines and a curve on the outside. The rest of this canoe shape was made by just mirroring this shape twice as I'll do here. And finally it was shelled. So with just a few simple commands, a fairly complicated shape was created versus if this had been done with a loft, we would probably have to have a cross section here, somewhere in the middle, somewhere about here, somewhere here, and finally an end cross section. So let's take a look at some of the rules for making this work properly. First of all, whenever you have a sweep, you have to start with a two-dimensional profile. Although you can sweep to a point at the end of the path, you cannot start at a point and expand to a two-dimensional cross-section. You have to start with a 2D cross-section and finish with a point. This is unlike a loft where you could actually have a point at both ends of the loft and some other cross-section in the middle. With the sweep, one end has to actually be a two-dimensional cross-section. Just like with loss, the profile has to have pierce relations to the path and the guide curves. Let's take a look at this sketch. You can see the corner points of this profile have pierce relations to this path, these two guide curves. This cross section is very simple, horizontal vertical line and just an arc with a radius on it. As this profile is swept along, this radius will be maintained all the way down the length. That's because we're telling it to do that with this dimension. We're also telling it that these three 
corner points have to ride along these rails. And the way we are notifying SOLIDWORKS of that is with the Pierce relation. We're essentially telling SOLIDWORKS that this cross section may be modified according to these three paths, or this path and these two guide curves. And we are notifying it with this actual relation, the Pierce relation. You do not want to use coincident relations at these corners. This will not give SOLIDWORKS the proper notification that this will be modifiable according to these three arcs. Always use the Pierce in this situation. Now one of the things you have to be careful of is not to create a profile which cannot be swept along the entire length of the path and guide curves. Let me show you an example of where that can happen. In this example, we have a path, a guide curve, and a profile. The guide curve starts out 50 millimeters away from the path and finishes 70 millimeters away from the path. In the middle it gets a little bit closer. The profile is a triangle with two legs that are 30 millimeters and it's pierced to the guide curve and the path. Let's see what happens when we try to sweep this with the guide curve. Here's our profile, our path, our guide curve, and we see that the sweep was unable to finish all the way to the very end. Well, why is that? The reason is this. Our guide curve starts out at 50 millimeters wide, finishes at 70. Our profile has two legs which are 30 millimeters and 30 millimeters. As these rails get farther apart from each other, this triangle is going to flatten out more and more. The widest this triangle can possibly be is 60 millimeters because of these two dimensions that were put into the profile sketch. Somewhere in this area, this guide curve gets to be about 60 millimeters away from the path, and at that point, it's impossible for the sweep to go any further because we would have an impossible triangle. Therefore, the sweep ends. What we need to do then, if we want the sweep to go to the very end, is do something different with this profile that will work. So we have to ask ourselves what it is we really want to accomplish. We obviously cannot have a situation where this is 70 and these are both 30, so maybe the answer is that we have to take these dimensions away altogether and do something like put in a vertical that's at the midplane. And perhaps what we really care about is the height of this triangle, which we could keep constant along the sweep, or maybe what we care about is the angle of this triangle. It really depends on the design. But one thing we do know is that if we give this a dimension that violates some of the parameters of the path and the guide curve, we will not get a full sweep. In this case, I'll just put an angle in instead. This means the entire sweep will have an angle of 35 degrees. And now we see it's successful. And not only that, anywhere along the sweep, the peak of the triangle is always right in the very middle of the cross section. So this is one potential disadvantage of a sweep with guide curves over a loft with guide curves, because a loft could have a series of different cross sections along its length, whereas with a sweep, we have to make sure that the initial profile is designed in such a way that it can make it all the way from the beginning all the way to the end. A common question is, which should be the path and which should be the guide curve? In this case, we actually have two choices. This could be the path and this could be the guide curve, or this could be the path and this could be the guide curve. In some cases, it really doesn't matter. In other cases, it does. If both the path and the guide curve start out perpendicular to the plane of the profile, it probably doesn't matter. In this case, this line here is perpendicular to the profile, 
but this line is not. So let's see what happens when we change some of these parameters around. If we don't worry about guide curves at all, and just focus on a profile and a path, and have the standard option where the orientation of the profile follows the path, in this case we'll just get a straight triangular sweep. If we change this curve to the path, we see the sweep bending around and the cross section is changing its orientation to maintain its original orientation at the beginning with the path. If we make this the guide curve in this particular case, we see that the sweep is not actually able to finish all the way to the end. This is because this sweep profile is bending to maintain its original orientation to this path, but this path here, which is now the guide curve, is no longer long enough to allow this sweep to finish to the end of its path. So here you can see there is a difference. What I recommend is if you have a choice between a path which begins perpendicular to the plane of the profile versus a path which does not begin perpendicular to the plane of the profile, use the perpendicular one as your path and the non-perpendicular one as your profile.